Okay, I want to give a brief overview on how a limit switch works on a dock and how it's activated and how the contactors work and an inside look of what it looks inside of a limit switch that is on your dock. And uh, what a limit switch does is basically tells the lift to stop at the uppermost limit and the lower uh, limit. And so um, it seems like there's a lack of information out there, so I kind of want to go through um, how to open it up, how to adjust it, and how to make sure it's working properly. So for today, we have the limit switch, the limit switch wire, which is going into your uh, controller. You have the pin for the tuning fork, and then you have a small flathead and a large, a decently large um, Phillips head to get the cover off. So basically how this works is if you look at your lift, you'll see a uh, limit switch like this with a aluminum tuning fork, aluminum so it's not rusting. Um, basically this will live on a plate and it'll go into the end of your tubing that rotates and collects the line to the boat lift. And as it spins, it activates little contactors inside of this box to make it stop uh, electronically. That then delivers to the three wire, red, black, and blue electrical out, and that'll shut it off on the um, controller side. So basically, let's go ahead and open this up. Hopefully you can see it okay. Basically, you have two Phillips heads on each side. You're just going to undo those. And this cover comes off just like this. It's got a rubber gasket. So when you're installing it, you want to make sure it fits perfectly over there and uh, is tightened down very well. I'm going to bring it in a little closer for you to see what's actually happening here. Um, right away, you'll notice the most important thing is the rotary. Okay, so as, and you, you'll be able to see this not very well, but as I spin this tuning fork, you'll notice this top and bottom segment will be slowly turning around this whole rotary. So you can see it's kind of in line a little bit, that corner. Watch as I spin, it goes closer and closer and closer to the other direction. Now the idea is, as your lift is spinning, this gets closer and closer to these two rollers, okay? Now these rollers, when they hit the plastic, they're going to depress a little button, as a, we call them a contactor. So pretend like my finger is this rotor plastic. As it spins around, as in your lift is going up or down, it's gonna push until, wait till you hear it. You hear that sound? That is the roller bar hitting the uh, rotary plastic piece to depress this contactor. Now the contactor is what is telling your lift to stop. So I can kind of you know give you an example here. Let's spin it the other way, okay? See how it's gaining closer and closer and closer. And as it gets right on that rotor, it, it hears that, you hear that little click, okay? So basically, uh, to make sure first, let's pretend like your lift um, is stuck on an upper or a lower position or it's stuck on both, that means you know, you can't go up or down without using an override, whether it's a TEC, a gem, or a Premier Remotes. Anything that has stuck contactors, meaning both of these being depressed at the same time, will not let the boat lift go up or down within the constraints of the limit switch. You would be able to override them, but your daily use will be affected. And now what happens is, is you know, a lot of these sit out in the weather so they obviously get some water and, and some moisture in there. And as you know, your boat lives pretty much at its upper limit. So what happens is, is it'll 
click and it'll stay clicked. And if you don't use your boat for months or you get some water damage in there and it just you know slowly starts getting stuck. So the same thing can happen on the bottom here. And when that happens, it's time to replace or it's time to lubricate or it's time to, you know, the limit switches are only for safety. You really should bring it to the limit switch and then come down a little bit so your contactors aren't always pressed in. Um, so now let's pretend that we're setting the limit for a boat lift. Um, there's two, there's a main screw here that locks both of these rotors in. So we're gonna loosen that a little bit. Uh, what I would do is take your boat up to the highest limit that you want it at, where you want it set for good. And then um, you also wanna pay attention, you know, you'll put this fork in, you'll go up, and your up could be counterclockwise or clockwise. So you wanna pay attention to which way that rotor is moving. So say it's a, uh, a counterclockwise or a clockwise position, you know your up is going to be this screw right here. And so what you can do is get your boat to the up position and then slowly spin this top screw here. We're spinning the top screw until it slowly clicks. Okay, so I just set my upper limit. So now we want to take the boat all the way down. And so as I go down, the top rotor goes away from the contactor and the bottom rotor is doing the same thing. But on the back side of this, it'll eventually hit the, uh, the lower limit notch. So what we can do is go to the second screw and kind of advance that all the way until it hits where we think the lower limit is. So set your boat to the lower limit and then turn this till it clicks. After you've got both of them set, you put this set screw back in and now you have both of those length periods set. So as I spin the other way, let's pretend now the lift's going back up. See how we are gaining closer and closer to that upper contactor. And as it clicks, now we're at our upper limit. So that's pretty much it. Um, you wanna make sure your top set screw is tight. And like I said, you wanna pay attention to these contactors being in good health. And uh, overall, making sure there's no moisture in the box, which means sticking the top piece on nice and firm. Rescrewing everything down here. You can almost see the uh, gasket bulge. And to me that shows that it's set and it's tight. So that's the basics of a limit switch.